I just got this cast iron pot from the landlady. This is an old cast iron pot. It was down in the basement. And I just paid $3 for it. And I don't know if there's any markings on it. Yeah, there... I don't know, I can't really tell. It's a problem with rust. You can't really see anything. But, um... I purchased this with an intention to make soap with it. I want to make soap over the wood stove. And I've been... I have everything I need except for a pot to cook it in. And you can use stainless steel or cast iron. Cast iron being best for over a open fire. Because most of your stainless steel pots have a weird heat transferring layer on the bottom that's actually somehow like glued on. It's a I know because I've accidentally, um, years ago, I accidentally boiled water in a, one of them over a gas stove and boiled the water out. And then the pot itself, the bottom separated off. It, uh, it was like a glue. It was a tacky, weird substance anyway. So I found out the hard way that uh, stainless steel pots usually have a thick heat transfer coating on the bottom. So over an open fire, the cast iron is the best way to go. And that's what they used back in the day. In the old days, is cast iron for almost everything. So, I'm going to clean this up and use this for soap making. Which I will show you on video. I'll show you the cleaning up process and the soap making process. Now, there's a couple ways to do it. A few ways. You can wire brush it. You can scrub it with, with uh, a lot of hard work and a uh, scrubby. You can throw it in a fire and let it burn out. And uh, I think you can try vinegar, cooking vinegar in it, which will probably, uh, if you let it soak, it'll eat the rust as well and clean it out. So I'm going to decide which way I want to do it. I just wanted to show you, that was only $3 for an antique cast iron pot for, uh, for making my soap with. So that'll be coming up pretty soon, just to give you a teaser. Out here in the side, where I'm going to have my maple syrup harvesting area, uh, on previous videos you will have seen I've been clearing this area out while excavating for firewood. I am burning pallet wood scraps here to start a fire which I will use to clean my cast iron pot and an old frying pan that I salvaged. Uh, got the frying pan for free. I don't remember where. I've had it for a year. and never got around to doing this. Easiest way i found to clean cast iron is to throw it in a fire and the fire will just turn everything to ash inside and out and uh, once the fire is cooled down you kick it out actually I wouldn't want to kick it out into the snow or it will break but you wait for the fire to cool down and you can pull the uh, pan out and let it cool down and uh, then you can season it and use it so once this fire is died down a little bit uh, to mostly just uh, coals once the biggest of the flames are gone I'll throw in my cast iron frying pan and the pot and let them get cleaned by nature by the fire so I'll let this burn a little bit and we'll come back later with the cast iron to be cleaned it's getting dark soon so I'm rushing the process a bit and I threw them on now you can see, let me zoom in, that pan is rusty. Really, really rusty. So, uh, I mean that, if this turns out nice, it's definitely going to be a very good test of the, uh, the fire burn method for cleaning cast iron cookware. So, well, I've got a, uh, a rake here, uh, right here, that I'm using to to hook and move them around with a little bit. Now the rust inside the pot is turning black. It's getting darker in color. You can see how rusty it is. It's really bad. It's probably going to be pitted. But really for what I'm going to use that for won't matter. That's going to be used for making soap from now on. So that's a dedicated soap pot from now on once I get it cleaned. I just need to get the rust out of it. So I'm going to just basically rotate these and turn them around in the fire a bit and uh, 
and burn off all the rust on both sides. I can tell you part of the reason why coals are better to work with, you won't have the smoke and soot to deal with. Well, the bottom of that is already cleaning up. Nice. It's making a difference, it is. Oh yeah, the, the bottom of the pot is already shining up. So it's literally gonna burn the rust off and convert it to ash. And then all ha I'll have to do is give it a little rub down. I'll uh, use a wire brush and rub off the worst of the, the soot and ash outside before I take it in tonight. Hopefully, I'd like to do a, a soap making video tonight if I can manage to get this pot cleaned in, a, in time and, and ready. So we'll see how that goes. And then we'll take them in on the wood stove later on and season them. We'll season them both and I'll, I'll show you how, you how that works as well. Depending on how this, uh, this burning process turns out. So now it's going down to a nice, nice level. Right there is where it's really going to do some good work. Once the, uh, the flames are out and it's just hot coals, what it's going to do is it's going to burn off all that rust and convert it into ash. And then all I have to do is give it a wipe down after they're cooled off. Now, I have added my wok as well because it was um, in, where was that? I think it was in my RV and mice got into it and stuff. So then I tossed it outside and uh, left it out all winter because it was disgusting and now what I'm doing is I'm just going to recondition that as well I haven't been cooking on my walk in about eh, maybe a year yeah it was a year when I went to Australia that walk got filthy from mice and I haven't used it since so finally finally I'm going to recondition my walk as well and I'll start using it that's the uh, in the back side there. So I've got my frying pan upside down here in the coals. The new pot that I just got, well old new pot that I just got, new to me, upside down over here and then my walk is right set up because it had some uh, some ice stuck on it. So I'll uh, burn that out nicely on both sides. Once this is all coals and what I'll do is just keep shuffling it around with the rake into the coals and funny enough it looks like more flame on camera than it really is it's weird but once I've got that all done to just red hot glowing coals that's the best best time for cooking off the rust on these pans but anyway like I said I just wanted to rush it a bit and burn off some of the worst of it because it's cold and I have been sick and uh, it's getting dark so hopefully I'll get these cleaned up tonight and Get going on the soap making. Now that's a good cleansing glow there. I got all three upside down. I've been rotating them back and forth. I've got them all upside down now so that all the uh, the uh, soot and ash will be burned out of the inside by the coals. Once the fire is gone completely and it's just coals, well that's when the the ash or the soot will get burned off. And it'll have just pure cast iron. So, a little bit longer and we'll be good to go. Then I'll be able to pull them out. Once it's, once I don't see any more flames, then I know that there will be no more soot being uh, burnt onto the, the pots and pans here. Alright, I'm going to let that go until there's absolutely no flame left. And that'll ensure that the soot is burnt off as well just from the sheer heat of the coals. So, soon, pretty soon. But the idea is literally I'm burning off the rust and any dirt and any, uh, any junk at all and sterilizing the, the pots, sterilization by fire. There's definitely no sign of the mouse junk that was in that big cast iron pot before. That is burnt off, sterilized, sanitized, the, uh, the wok, and purification by fire. Nothing can really beat that. 
nothing will survive that to be honest because that's been in there in some serious hot fire and some coals so I'll trust it I'll feel safe with it when it's done so I'll let it keep burning a bit until there's absolutely no uh, no flames left and what I'm doing is pressing them down deep into the coals to really get it in there into the heat and burn off the the soot and the residual rust pretty soon okay I'm out here right now having a look at this now the cast iron pan is looking really good on the the bottom is almost all bare metal and I can see the writing pretty well now it's really good very well cleaned up the handle is I can see it's almost all bare metal you can see the sparklies of the metal I don't know how well it shows up on camera but it's it's fairly well cleaned up now the walk still has a lot of rust a lot of service rust but I threw that in a lot later I think just a brushing out and that'll be nice then um, I have yet to turn it over the pot is full of black soot but I knew that would be really hard to get cleaned out because of its depth now let me turn over let me grab my uh, thing here it's gonna be awkward to show you this and whoops it off. Got snow on the on the rake. All right. Now the pan is looking good. There's still some surface rust, but you can see it's just uh, flaking off. You can see the uh, the rust. Oh yeah, it's just actually the red. You can tell. I don't know if you can see it on camera as well as I can. The red is just, can you see that spot where I rubbed it? It just flakes off, basically. So that's just, uh, oops, sorry, I'm trying to show you and hold the camera by hand. That just flakes off, so it's pretty much clean. And the side walls are actually bare metal now, so it really did a good job on that. That I'll probably just take in and, and wipe out with a rag and some oil, and that'll be good to go. Now the wok, on the other hand, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's still rusty. So the wok, again, I threw that in too late. And the pan, or the pot, so that pan is good. The pot, the outside of the pot looks better than the inside. But again, it's very sooty. Yeah, I can see bare metal in a lot of places on that pot now. It really cleaned off a lot of the rust. I can see it's almost all bare metal on the outside of that pot. So the inside it's hard to tell because it's really sooty. But I'm thinking a good wipe down with some uh Yeah, look it's all it scrapes right off. I'm thinking a wipe down with an oily paper towel. And that probably will all come out. So I'll try that out as well. Now the walk on the other hand, that one was really bad. The bottom of the walk is very clean. All dirt and filth is gone. That's good. Very clean. The inside is still quite rusty. But I bet see that scrapes right off as well now too so I think again a rub down with some uh, an oily rag will probably do that a world of good because what happens is all at high heat it separates the everything from the from the steel from the, the raw iron so well, well we'll take them in and see how it turns out well that's it Next step is to check it out indoors. Now I gotta cool them off somewhere. Problem is it's so hot, I'll take the rake and hopefully it'll cool enough to touch by the time I get them over to the tiny house. But uh, there it is. We'll take them inside and see how it worked out. Okay, now here's my cast iron frying pan. Now the edges are quite clean and it looks like the rust just sort of flakes off yes it's would be beneficial if I could take this out and use a um, 
air compressor, but my baby generator has died. I am off the grid. For those of you that don't know, my baby generator died, the Harbor Freight generator. So I'm going to try a paper towel that is moistened with vegetable oil, um, olive oil, and see if I can get this rust to come off easily here. Oh yeah, you can see it's just it's just all surface now. It's just coming right off. You can see how clean it is. Look at that. Well, that is absolutely easy work. That is the easiest I've ever seen, to be honest. I think if it wasn't dead of winter and miserably cold out. Oh, look at that. Yes, this is amazing. See, it's it actually looks worse than it is. The rust is coming right up into the towel. Oh, it's amazing. Actually, I wonder if I just pour it into there, what'll happen? It'll be a lot of mess. Look at that. Oh, yeah, that rust is just coming right up into the towel. It's all just, it's all gone. It's all off the metal. Quite impressive. So now what I have to do is just basically get all this, this rust out of there. Quite impressive. Of course, the uh, the handle is filthy. <laughs> really surprised. This is amazing. Yeah, I I I've done this before. Okay, but it was like a year or so ago, and I forgot how well it worked. And I um, am absolutely impressed with the fact that this is just coming up into the towel. It's all coming off the metal. It's done. It's all done. Now you saw this pan earlier. It was really bad. It was really rusty. And all this is now if I can just get this out. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some water there in there and heat it up on the wood stove. And that'll help me get this, this rust off. Because this is just... I hope this shows up. But yeah, you can see that, right? That's just... Uh, some surface rust now, just just powder that I have to remove from the thing and clean the handle. Quite amazing. Of course the bottom, that's going to be the same issue, I'm sure. Yes, it is. Look at that. It just comes right off. Really incredible. Look at that. Can you see the color of that pan just taking shape? It's just plain old cast iron color now. Look at that. Wipes right off. Oh, look at that. It just comes right off. All that rust is gone. I'm going to use a few towels here. I do think if I had a plentiful water supply, it might help a lot to use water. But I don't. In the middle of winter, I have a shortage of water out here in the off grid homestead. Hopefully I'll rectify that next year, but right now it is what it is. Look at that. It's like a brand new pan. It's gonna be when I when I um, Finish cleaning this off. It's gonna be like a brand new pan. I do got to get that handle cleaned up You can see every detail of the printing on this Which obviously or honestly I I didn't see that printing on here before on the bottom of this pan So all that rust comes right off now. Oh, 
Wagner's 1898 original cast iron cookware seasoning instructions one oops no that's hard to see sear thoroughly I think it says wet with cooking oil put in 500 degrees oven and the rest is a little bit hard but ten and a half inch skillet made in USA basically to season this is exactly what I'm about to do in a minute here I forgot to get that handle clean to season this thing you want to cover it with oil everywhere thoroughly and then you want to put it in your oven generally at 300 degrees but I think this is 500 degrees I could be wrong because it is it does still have some rust dust on there some iron oxide dust on there that I'll be getting off but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up on the wood stove I'll show you that in a minute I'm going to put it right up on the wood stove here and I'm going to put some water in it and heat that up and then the water is going to help me to clean it out a bit better take you over here and see you can see that it's just it's just got to be cleaned out now that's it it's absolutely all the rust has been freed up from the pan itself and it just has to be clean you can see the handle is just pure bare iron now this is absolutely perfect so I'm gonna put some water in there and heat it up and then I'll, I'll use that to help rinse this off instead of wasting oil and paper towels that'll help me get a lot of this powder this rust powder off there but it's looking good Well, I didn't show it on video, but I simply took the water that was in the pot and I poured it outside. A lot of the rust floated to the surface, but it really wasn't a very profitable step. And what I've done now is I've just taken um, a couple paper towels in the oil like this and just sort of rub it around. And I've repeated this about with four or five paper towels now. And cover the whole thing and it's coming out cleaner and cleaner right now there's not very much rust left at all in here and I'm just continuing to use oil and paper towel and wipe this down basically like this until it comes away clean see now it's almost completely clean I'm really not getting much rust up out of there at all anymore see it's really clean now quite amazing so I think one more shot with some oil one last round here and this pan is gonna be as clean as it's gonna get probably it'll be ready I would trust it for cooking now at this point actually the iron isn't gonna hurt you it's actually gonna be uh, good for you some some iron good for you people have cooked for hundreds of years of this stuff if not thousands I'm not sure how long cast iron was around but you now I'm gonna hold this over a container and wipe out the uh, paper towel particles and we'll be back here in a minute with it well there it is now the best thing I can do with this thing is use it so tomorrow I'm gonna to cook breakfast on that I'm gonna cook eggs in that tomorrow right now I'm gonna give it a wipe down with uh, some fresh oil and then I'm gonna put it on top of the wood stove to cure for a while and it'll be non-stick and ready to use for breakfast I'm gonna cook some eggs and I'll, uh, I'll record that in the morning so I just put some fresh oil in there and now I'm gonna take my paper towel 
and I just want to smear that around try not to wreck my towel and get it all over the uh, paper towel fibers all over the pan now that I got it somewhat clean I don't want to smear that so what I want to do is basically get a generous coating of oil on here all the way around on all surfaces of the inside of this pan and then when I cook with it it'll be no stick cast iron is the ultimate and original non-stick cookware and from my research I believe the reason it has been abandoned in modern times is because of the the necessity to care for it with you don't want to just wash it with soap and water because that takes away the oils, the protective oils on it and to clean cast iron you usually use fire like we showed you today and I could still could still use a little bit of wiping down but really it's as, as good as I'm going to get it and now just using it is gonna I mean that to me that's nothing that's no big deal now just using it is gonna cure it and it'll be fine best thing I can do now is use it on a daily basis so now that goes on top of the wood stove and I'll show you here in a minute And that's where I'm going to leave it for a while. Just let that oil, let that pan heat up and let the oil soak in deep into the, the pores of the metal. And it'll be ready to go for tomorrow. That is quite impressive. Purified by fire. Well, look at that. After sitting and curing on the wood stove it looks like the day it was brought out of the store it's a perfect black all around perfect black coating I don't know how well that really shows up on camera now what you see in the middle is where the oil sort of separated and here it's a little bit thicker the shinier spot but look at how smooth and perfect I mean that is just amazing it's quite impressive compared to how that was well Gonna cook up some eggs now. Breakfast is ready. You gotta be careful here because it's spitting. I've got fish and eggs. Eggs right out of the uh, out of the chicken coop and fish out of a tin. Now I'm gonna get this off the stove and let it cool down a minute because it's really too hot to touch and it's still splattering. When it stops splattering, I'll show you how this is non-stick. Okay, now let's see here. Look at this. Yeah, look at that. Now the fish um, makes it a little bit awkward because the fish juice is in there. It's awkward for me to hold this camera and try to show you the eggs come off easily. See, look at that. Look at that. No stick. It's very awkward trying to hold the camera and looking. I'm looking through the camera view. See, no stick slightly overcooked it on the wood stove. It's awkward because the wood stove is an imprecise uh, uh, cooking surface. Okay. So, and that'll be very easy to clean up when I'm done as well. And all I have to do when I'm done, I've learned to put vinegar in it. Heat up the vinegar and that loosens everything up and s sterilizes. And then uh, toss it out, wipe it with a paper towel and you are done. So I'm going to enjoy breakfast. Well, there's the pan after finishing breakfast. And everything scraped up really nice. Here there was a little bit. Um, eggs are one of the worst things for sticking to any pan. As a lot of you probably know. And it is the ultimate test of a no-stick surface. And when I 
do the cleaning process that will come right up easily and I'll show you that in a separate video how to clean and care for a cast iron pan